Hi dear students, welcome to Sri Ram's IAS. I'm Kavita. I'll be teaching anthropology optional for Sri Ram's IAS on an academic platform. And in this lecture, we shall be discussing a very interesting topic in anthropology that is sacred complex. The concept of sacred complex was given by a very renowned Indian anthropologist L.P. Vidyarthi. L.P. Vidyarthi in his landmark study, the sacred complex of Hindu Gaya gave us the concept of sacred complex. So what are sacred complexes? Sacred complexes are centers of civilization wherein pilgrims from different regions of India, from different levels of culture interact. Okay. Sacred complexes are the centers of civilization where people from different walks of life, okay, people from rural areas, people from urban areas, people from folk culture, urban culture, little tradition, great tradition, from different castes, communities, from varying cultures, all of these come together in places of pilgrimage and interact. These places of pilgrimage are called as sacred complex by our LP Vidyarthi. Okay. So before we discuss further about sacred complex, I would like to give you some important information. That is the comprehensive batch on anthropology by Sriram's IAS on an academy platform will be taken by Tirumurugan sir and myself Kavita. So in case you have not enrolled for the course, this is the right time for you to enroll. Also, the mission one year for UPSC Civil Services Examination 2024, that is a comprehensive batch for UPSC Civil Services Examination 2024 will be held which covers 100% of the syllabus of UPSC in an integrated manner and in this course you will get the complete preparation for all the three stages of the examination including prelims, mains and interview. Also you have a limited period offer of flat 25% for both the general studies as well as the optional subjects. So in case you have not enrolled for any of these courses this is the right time for you to enroll to the course with the discount that is available. Okay. Sacred complex. Now getting back to our topic of discussion, sacred complex. The sacred complexes are centers of civilization where people from different walks of life, different cultures, from rural areas, from urban areas, from great tradition, from little tradition, from different castes, communities and so on, all of these people come together and interact in these ancient places of civilization. Say take for example Bodh Gaya. We all know where is Bodh Gaya? It is in, it is in Bihar, right? So these places are the ancient places of civilization where there is interaction of people from different cultures and different walks of life and different traditions and these centers of civilization are called as sacred complex by our L.P. Vidyarthi. So L.P. Vidyarthi in his study of the ancient city of Gaya that is Bodh Gaya which is located in the ancient cultural zone of Magadha. So now it is Bihar but earlier this ancient uh, Bodh Gaya was located in the zone of Magadha. So he tried to analyze the contribution and the importance of traditional centers in Indian civilization. So what is it that these centers of civilization are serving? So what is the importance and what is the contribution of these centers? So this is the study which he was undertaking there in Bodh Gaya. So based on his study over there, he gave us the concept of 
sacred complex. So during his study in Bodh Gaya, L.P. Vidyarthi came up with a set of three analytical concepts or three descriptive terminologies. Okay. So while L.P. Vidyarthi was studying the ancient city of Bodh Gaya, okay, that is the ancient center of civilization, he gave us three analytical concepts or three descriptive terms. And he said that if you understand these three analytical terms or concepts and conceive them collectively, then you can understand what is the meaning of sacred complex. Okay. So he said that there are three analytical concepts or descriptive terms. First one is sacred geography. Second one is sacred specialist. And third one is sacred practices or sacred performances. Okay. When these three analytical terms or the descriptive terms are collectively conceived, we can understand what is the meaning of sacred complex. Okay. So, L.P. Vidyati gave us three analytical terms or descriptive terms and he said that these three concepts conceived collectively is what is called as the sacred complex. Okay. So, he says that sacred complex of Hindu place of pilgrimage reflects a level of continuity, compromise and combination that happens between the great tradition and the little tradition. So now if you are wondering what do we mean by great tradition and little tradition, I have already posted a video on great tradition and little tradition. So please go to that video in order to understand what we mean by little tradition and great tradition. Okay. So uh, LP Vidyati gives us three analytical terms or descriptive terms and he says that when these three are conceived collectively, we can understand the meaning of the sacred complex. And he also says that these ancient centers of civilization are the places where there is a level of continuity, compromise and combination that is happening between the great tradition and the little tradition elements. So, there is a continuity compromise and combination of the great tradition and the little tradition happening in these ancient centers of civilization which L.P. Vidyati termed as sacred complex. So now let us try to understand each one of these descriptive terms or analytical terms given by L.P. Vidyati. First one is the sacred specialist. What is a sacred specialist? Sacred specialists are the priests or the Brahmins who perform the sacred performances in these sacred complexes. Okay. So these people are the one who maintain a distinct lifestyle. Okay. Just by looking at them, just by their looks, you can identify that they are a priest or a Brahmin or a Pandit and there is something unique about them. Okay. So, you can uh, just guess by their attire and their lifestyle. So, they will have very much clean habits. They will have a distinct way of dressing. They will have their hair tried into a, uh, you know, they would, uh, they would have probably shaved their head. But only in this region, they will have a tuft of hair. And the way they dress, so they will be wearing this um, sacred thread over their chest. And, they, you know, I can show you a picture for that so that you can understand much better. So, here in this image, you can see this person has shaved his head. However, he will have a tuft of hair over here in the center. Then he is wearing big uh, jewelry. Then he has this unique uh, way of wearing that uh, dhoti and the, you know, uh, whatever you call it, that dhoti and the attire which he uses to cover his chest. Okay. So, all of this is special about the sacred specialists. They are distinguished, that is they are different from the rest of the people by their different kind of lifestyle, by their dressing sense, in their food habits, they will have clean habits and the way they speak, that will also be different from the rest of the people. 
okay so these are the sacred specialists so the sacred specialists maintain a distinct style of life and they also transmit the great tradition elements among the rural population so how do they do that first and foremost these are the people who will popularize the religious texts say for example they will uh, conduct bhajans they will conduct religious gatherings wherein they preach about the hindu philosophy hindu traditions hindu culture and they will uh, uh, preach about the uh, various uh, religious texts like the sanskritic literature the brahmanas the puranas ramayan mahabharat and so on so these are the people that is the sacred specialists are the people who popularize our religious texts okay so these people will carry out these activities in rural areas thereby transmitting the greater tradition elements or the great tradition elements in the rural areas okay so we know that great tradition elements are mostly found among the urban elite whereas the little tradition elements can be seen among the folk culture the rural people the peasant society and so on right so by taking these popular and by talking about these and popularizing these religious texts like the ramayana mahabharat and so on in the rural areas they are paving a way for the transmission of the great tradition into the rural areas wherein there is presence of little tradition isn't it thus this leads to movement of the traditions and interpenetration and fusion of the traditions okay so they also organize pilgrimage so in rural areas it is the sacred specialist who gather all the people together and take them on pilgrimage say for example rath yatra or taking them to places the places of a pilgrimage like the kashi yatra or char dham yatra right taking them to rishikesh haridwar or uh, you know much more other places of religious pilgrimage by doing so and by popularizing the religious texts and also by officiating as the temple priest and also by conducting various rituals these are the sacred specialists who popularize the great tradition and they play a crucial role in the sacred complex fine so i am understanding so what do we mean by sacred specialist and what is the function of the sacred specialist sacred specialists are the ones who maintain a distinct style of life and these are the ones who play a crucial role in the transmission of the great tradition to the uh, areas of little tradition like the rural areas so this is a one important analytical or the descriptive term given by lp vidyarthi shall we move on to the next descriptive term now moving on to the second analytical term or the descriptive term that is sacred geography right so first we discussed what we mean by sacred specialist okay next is sacred geography so sacred geography these are the religious places which can further be divided into zones segments and clusters and sacred centers and both in space and time we can see that sacred geography demonstrates the continuity of great and little tradition so what do we mean by sacred geography sacred geography means if you consider any place of religious pilgrimage like take for example kashi right here is an image of kashi uh, or varanasi varanasi is the city this place is traditionally called as kashi right so if you have ever been to this place or if you see the images or videos on youtube you can see how beautiful this place is there is ganga river which is flowing and there is uh, on the banks of the ganga river we have various ghats like we have harishchandra ghat we have so many number of ghats and uh, after the ghats we have the temples various temples isn't it so if you go to any of these places you can find how unique and different it is from rest of the country so in most of the places not just in kashi you can witness there is a distinct geography in almost all the places of religious pilgrimage you might consider tirupati you might consider a jagannath puri temple 
or you might consider uh, Rishikesh, okay? You might consider any place which is an ancient center of civilization and which is a place of religious pilgrimage. So in most of these uh, places, what is common is you will either have a hill or a hillock, you will have a stream of river or a rivulet which is flowing nearby. You will have many places or tiny, tiny mandirs or temples or ghats all along the banks of the river. And this place itself, you can see the art, architecture, history. And just by visiting those places or even by seeing the pictures, you can understand how unique. And they have so much of positive vibes over there. The vibe of these places is altogether different. Okay, so that is why these are called as sacred geography. That is, you can find these kind of uh, attributes, these kind of um, architecture, the geography, uh, geographical elements only in these places of ancient civilization, which are also the places of uh, religious pilgrimage, right? So, this is what we call it as sacred geography. Got it? You understood what we mean by sacred geography? So, these places which are having a unique geography within them, be it a mountain or a hillock or a river or the guards, the people who come there, the architecture over there, the history of those places, the climate, all of this is very much unique, right? So, this is what we mean by sacred geography. And these religious places or the ancient centers of pilgrimage can be further divided into zones, segments and clusters of sacred centers as well. So, these places, okay, so you might consider um, Rishikesh or you might consider Kashi or Jagannath or you might consider Rameshwaram or Tirupati, all of these are ancient centers of civilization and in these places, one thing which is common is you can find people from all walks of life coming here to worship, isn't it? So people whether from rural areas, people from urban areas, from different cultures, people from great tradition, little tradition, people from different statuses of the society, from different parts of the country, from different parts of the globe, all of these people come together over here and these are the places where the exchange of the and the interaction of the great tradition and the little tradition elements happen. Okay, so that is why this sacred geography is so important in understanding sacred complex. Okay, are you all following? Fine. Further, let's move on to the third important descriptive or the analytical term which is sacred practice or sacred performance. You can call it either way. So, sacred practices. So, who does the sacred practices? I already told you about the sacred specialist or the sacred practitioner, isn't it? These people are called as the Gayawal Brahmins, okay? So, these people are the ones who carry out the sacred practices because it is these Gayawal Brahmins or the priests who officiate as the temple priests and who are the ones who popularize the religious uh, text, who organize pilgrimages, right? And these are the ones who also conduct the various rituals. So, it is these Gayaval Brahmins who are doing the activity of sacred practices or sacred performances. Okay? So, the sacred practices or the sacred performances are carried out by the Gayaval Brahmins. Okay, what does this include? It includes sacrifices, it includes recitation of the Vedas and it also includes the performance of Gaya Shraddha. What do we mean by Gaya Shraddha? See, this is how Gaya Shraddha is carried out. So, I think many of you all would have come across these rituals at least once in a year, right? So, usually there is this uh, occasion festival called as Mahalaya Amavase wherein they usually conduct these rituals and even on, uh, you know, uh, death rituals, this is conducted. So, when a person dies after some 13th or 15th day, some death rituals are conducted, right? So, during which the male members of that family, either the 
uh, brothers of the deceased person or the sons of the deceased person they will uh, do these uh, rituals under the um, you know guidance of a priest right so they will make some uh, rice balls and they will put some black color sesame seeds on that and uh, they will sit near by near to a river source be it a river or a lake and they will uh, you know recite a few mantras and they will conduct these rituals this is called as gaya shraddha so actually this is done in the worshiping of our ancestral spirits that is why once in a year uh, these rituals are conducted for all our ancestors so in our family in our lineage whoever our ancestors were we believe that they will do good deeds for us and we pray for them once in a year and that is why uh, as a part of worship of the ancestral spirits we conduct this practice called as gaya shraddha okay i'm sure if you uh, you know well, irrespective of which part of the country you belong to you must have definitely witnessed this in your uh, home or in your uh, surroundings okay fine so this is gaya shraddha it is an elaborate form of sacrifice which we offer to the ancestral spirits so this gaya shraddha is a very important part of the sacred practices so who does the sacred practices or the performances it is the gayawal brahmins who carry out the sacred practices or the sacred performances so this includes performing of the gaya shraddha it includes sacrifices and it also includes the recitation of vedas etc so now we have understood the meaning of the three important analytical terms or the descriptive terms that is sacred specialist sacred performances or sacred practices and sacred geography when these three concepts or analytical terms are conceived collectively we get what we call it as sacred complex okay so what is a sacred complex a sacred complex is an intricate and interdependent grouping of the sacred centers okay the sacred performances and the sacred specialists got it did you all understand what i am trying to explain the sacred complexes are an intricate and interdependent grouping that is the sacred geography the sacred specialist and the sacred performance all of these three together combine to form an intricate group wherein each one of them are interdependent on the other okay such a grouping that is when we collectively conceive all these three together that is the sacred geography the sacred specialist and the sacred performances all these three form an intricate group wherein all of them are interdependent upon each other this is called as the sacred complex okay so sacred complexes are ancient centers of civilization where people from different walks of life come together and interact here and these are the places where there is a compromise continuity and combination of the little tradition and the great tradition elements which is happening so what do we mean by continuity of little tradition and great tradition so just because the little tradition and the little, great tradition elements are coming together over here neither of them lose their identity okay so sometimes we might get we might guess or we might get a question in mind saying that the great tradition are so popular they have a wide reach they are national in character so just because this great traditions are coming in will the little tradition disappear or will they lose its originality no that will never ever happen both the great tradition and the little tradition will interact with each other there is a fusion and interpenetration of these two traditions happening okay which contributes to the diversity so the great tradition elements are also influencing the little tradition and the little tradition elements are also influencing the great tradition so it is a continuous process neither of them lose their importance or their character okay and in sometimes there is a compromise happening between the little tradition and the great tradition 
also both of these are coming together and combining so now you can find some elements of the little tradition which are present among the great tradition and some elements of great tradition is present among the little tradition this is what we mean by combination okay so you understood that what we mean by continuity that is these two are happening in hand in hand neither of them will lose their importance or their significance that is both great tradition and little tradition are unique in itself and both of them will keep influencing the each other so there is a continuity and there are compromises and combination because some elements of little tradition move towards a greater tradition and some elements of great tradition move towards a little tradition and all of these can be you know you can witness all of this happening in the sacred complexes so sacred complexes are an important place where the compromise continuity and the combination of the great tradition and little tradition elements happen because these are the ancient centers of civilization wherein people from different walks of life come together and interact So now coming to the significance of the sacred complex. So what is the importance of the sacred complexes? Already we discussed one important significance that is the interpenetration and fusion of the great tradition and little tradition. So because of this there is cultural transmission which helps in the integration of civilization and also it has played an integrating role by providing a meeting place for different kinds of people from different tradition caste class and status already told you that sacred complexes are the ancient centers of civilization where people from different walks of life from great tradition little tradition from urban rural from uh, different castes different communities from different statuses all of these people come together and interact in these centers because of which it leads to cultural transmission okay it leads to integration of the civilization and it also provides a integrating role for all these people from different walks of life then it also cultivates and promotes creative arts and literature right so there is popularizing of the religious texts which happens over here so it cultivates arts and literature and it also binds together people from different diversities be it socially geographically or linguistic so i told you you can find that in kashi or in rameshwaram or in you know any of these uh, places of ancient civilization you can find people from all the parts of the country and all the parts of the globe coming here isn't it they might be from different castes community speaking different languages with different cultures different backgrounds following different rituals customs but all of these people come together so it helps us in binding people together then they also serve as means you know these are the institutions of pilgrimage which are also effective in serving as places of integration for all these people coming from different walks of life also we must consider that the relationship with the of the sacred complex with the outside world is not single sided that is we cannot assume that it is the sacred complex alone which is giving all the benefits to the people that is it is helping in the people to come together to integrate them to exchange the traditions to learn different cultures right and it is uh, providing a platform for people from different cultures and different uh, languages and different caste communities to come together and interact and exchange this is not a one sided relationship in addition the sacred complexes are also getting benefit from the people who come there how are they getting benefited see most of the uh, donations and the money and you know there is lot amount of uh, people coming from different parts of the globe and providing various kind of facilities in these 
uh, places like construction of the temple, uh, you know, temple, construction of the temple or providing whatever that is necessary for the temple, providing, uh, you know, uh, halls for um, hall, you know, construction of the hall, dining halls, construction of the temple, providing other whatever needs are there for a temple, all of these activities are done by the funds given by the people visiting the temple, right? So, these are also the benefits which the sacred complex is deriving from the outside world. So, um, just because L.P. Vidyati studied both Gaia and gave us the concept of sacred complex, please do not misunderstand that the concept of uh, sacred complex is limited only to both Gaya. No, it is not so. It is only that our LP Vidyati studied the um, studied the ancient civilization, studied the center of ancient civilization, which is both Gaya in Bihar presently. And from based on his study, he gave us the concept of sacred complex. However, later many anthropologists got inspired by the concept of sacred complex given by L.P. Vidyarthi and they also started studying other ancient centers of civilization like for example Ja studied the sacred complex of Ratanpur, Mahopatra studied the Lingaraj temple, where is the Lingaraj temple? It is in Bhuvaneshwar, correct? Yeah, then Morab, Morab and Goswami studied the Chamundeshwari temple which is in Mysore, right? Then Chakravarti studied the Tarakeshwara temple which is in West Bengal. So all these are also sacred complexes. It is just that our LP Vidyarthi based on his study in Bodh Gaya gave us the concept of sacred complex. Later inspired by his study the others also took up the study of various other ancient centers of civilization. So these places which I have mentioned here these are also sacred complexes, okay? So, I hope you understood this very simple and interesting topic called a sacred complex. Who gave the concept of sacred complex and what are the three analytical or the descriptive terms and how when these three are conceived collectively, we get the understanding of the sacred complex and what is the significance of sacred complex and further, who are the other anthropologists who studied various other sacred complexes, okay? I hope you got a good understanding of this topic. We shall discuss much more interesting and simple and, you know, uh, fun topics in our future lectures in our anthropology comprehensive course. Until then, take care. Bye. Have a good day.